Hey guys, welcome to the first part of our GitLab High Availability um, series here. Um, so in this new series, I'm essentially going to set, set up GitLab HA um, and go through each part of what you know the instructions kind of say um, and how to configure certain things for the services and have it run, um, which would be really cool um, because at the end of the day, that means you can take down a few machines and get your GitLab instance will still run um, and it won't be that big of a deal, which is kind of, you know, how HA should work because imagine if you had one server running all of like Google or YouTube, um, that would not be very sustainable at all. Um, and if you had to do any maintenance, downtime is, oh man, we don't even talk about that. So, um, but I'm looking forward to hopefully creating maybe like seven or eight pods. I think there's that many services to kind of separate out um, as well as maybe in the future do more high availability um, setups for other uh, related services. So I'm going to be on the lookout for that. So this is going to be a, a very uh, fun series. So um, in this first part, I'm going to kind of just show you what I have all laid out um, and then we will get started with probably setting up like the internal load balancer so that that's ready for load balancing the stuff when things start connecting. So um, that one's actually a pretty simple configuration. So I'll just add it on to uh, the intro here. So let's get started. All right. So um, to kind of get started to show you guys what I got is uh, I first actually have all the virtual machines created um, because if I didn't, it would take probably like forever, honestly. Um, so I got all the DNS, I got the virtual machines created. Um, so as you can see here, I have all the services um, that it would need. So we got the console, we got Postgres, we got PG Bouncer, Redis, Gitly, Prefect, Sidekick, Rails, Prometheus, and internal and external GitLab um, load balances. So we'll, we'll do the internal one um, first uh, because that will be required for someone in creating these. And then we'll do the external one very last because that's when we will actually do the connection and whatnot. So but you can see that there are a lot of service to create. So this is probably going to be the one of the harder parts of doing it is you're going to need like 28 VMs, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just it just takes a while. So luckily, my mini swarm actually supports, you know, um, this configuration pretty well. Um, obviously, I scaled down the resources so it's not using, you know, like 16 gigs of RAM for, for one box. Everything is one CPU, one gig of RAM for testing purposes. Um, but you obviously want to increase these based off of the specs that it needs. So um, GitLab HA, um, we'll look up GitLab HA. So in GitLab's documentation, there's actually a pretty decent amount of documentation that they have. GitLab HA doesn't actually start until um, 60 RPS or 3,000 users. So this is when they first start introducing the actual um, HA architecture that you can apply. So you can see how it has all the nodes and stuff like that, as well as recommended configurations for if you were to support up to like 3,000 users. So you can see all of that. Um, the other thing to note is um, they have object storage here. So if you were to set up a um, min IO server to replace your uh, essentially using like AWS S3, that would be another server too. So I actually do use a min IO uh, server for this um, just because I already have one running from previous videos, um, which is super easy to set up. And if you need to set one up, um, there is one in my home lab playlist to, to, to show you how to do that. Um, but we'll essentially be using their omnibus and breaking that out into all these services here. So if we scroll down, we can see a diagram, which is actually pretty neat on how everything kind of talks to each other, um, which makes it kind of simple to kind of figure out, hey, what what communicates with what? Um, so that's why we want to do the internal load balancer first, so that when we get the Gilly cluster and the database up, that Rails can talk to it as well as Psychic can talk to it. Um, because if the internal load balancer isn't there yet, Psychic and GitLab Rails will essentially error out saying, hey, it can't connect to these things, right? Um, and then if we scroll down, we can kind of see all the components. So it tells you to set up external and internal load balancer first. We'll do the external last because we won't hit it until the very end. But we want to definitely do the internal. And then we'll create another video for the console services, Postgres, PG Bouncer, um, Redis, Skiddly Cluster, Sidekick, um, and then GitLab Rails. Um, we might add Prometheus in there. Um, 
in, in one of them because uh, it, that's just for monitoring. Um, but we might keep that separate too. So that'll be about like eight-ish, nine-ish um, parts, which would be a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, so the first thing that we'll do is essentially go scroll down to the configuration for uh, the internal load balancer. So they don't really give you too much in regards to um, the load balancing because there's a lot of things that you can do with load balancing, um, but they do give an example with HA proxy. So we'll utilize HA proxy for this um, to get it configured. So what we want to do is essentially, um, and, I, and I'm already in here, create a Ansible playbook that we will run to install GitLab lb.yaml. So this will essentially install the um, stuff that is needed um, for setting up a load balancer, essentially. Um, so give me one second. I need to pull up uh, my doc because it's been a little bit since I've, I've last done this. And, and I realized I already messed up because I didn't do the um, hyphens correctly. So we'll install GitLab HALB. Um, so we'll use this playbook for both internal and external load balancing, um, and everything will be based off of hosting. So that's that's another thing to consider here. So in my inventory, I have everything as this. So we will be basing off things by the name. So for example, if it's GitLab uh, internal, we'll name it that. If it's GitLab external, we'll name it that. Right. So what we'll do is set it up. So host. Um, we'll parameterize this to be host name so that we can use it uh, in regards to in the AWX to, to for it. We'll just make sure we run everything as root um, because we really want to be root in this case. Um, and then we'll set up task in here. So the first task will be to install HA proxy because if it isn't installed, well, you can't really run it, right? So we'll use the Ansible built in built in yum and we'll install ha proxy and in this case we'll just do state latest so just install the latest ha proxy then what we'll do next is copy internal ha proxy configuration um so we will we will do like a template thing like how we have nginx here we'll do a, another template thing so we'll copy and the source will be templates and internal ha proxy.cfg. And the destination will be Etsy ha proxy. Um, ha proxy.cfg is where the configuration should live. But we will only want this to run when the inventory host name is equal to GitLab internal. Um, so we only want to copy the internal one for the internal one and then the external one for the external load balancer. So, um, because we'll, we'll, we'll use HA proxy for the external one as well. Um, so external and external. And then after we copy those, we want to actually make it so that we restart HA proxy, which is Ansible built in service name HA proxy. And we'll just set the state to be restarted. And that's essentially it for, for the for the configuration. Um, what we'll do now is we need to actually create the file. So internal ha proxy.cfg. And we can go back to the GitLab documentation and essentially copy this and paste it in here. Um, so there's a few things that you obviously want to update. Um, the one that you probably won't know um, is I think this the documentation in GitLab is slightly older um, because I was having some issues with the format raw um, in this. So like I had to remove that for it to work. Um, so depending on your version you're running, you might need to remove that if it's not recognizing. Um, then the other thing is for the back end. So you can see how those IPs in regards to the back end here. So we have got these IPs, which clearly don't relate to, to the IPs that I'm actually running. So we got the PG Bouncer IPs for this one, um, which makes sense because it's named PG Bouncer and the perfect IPs. Um, so instead of updating the IPs to what I have, I'm going to just use DNS, and I hope this works, um, to actually uh, GitLab PG Bouncer. <laughs> um, hopefully it resolves correctly. If not, we'll come back and, and redo it. Um, but I think it's a hyphen. So GitLab PG Bouncer 1. Yeah. 
GitLab PG Bouncer 1. So that's what it resolves as because that's what my DNS is. Um, so we'll go back in here and we'll update the other two. And make sure you type it in right because then it'll, it will definitely not work if it if it's not right. <laughs> GitLab PG Bouncer 3. Uh, dragon dot local let's do fully qualified domains so it resolves correctly um, dragon dot local and then we'll do the same thing here for the perfect service prefect um, <laughs> GitLab prefect one dot dragon dot local and we'll copy and paste the other two and we'll update the numbers and that's pretty much it for the internal load balancer configuration. So um, add internal load balancer config. And you understand why the more um, we start getting to it, it won't really show why as well doing the actual um, configuration just for uh, just one server because I'm just setting it up as one server. But once you start configuring the rest of the stuff like console, Postgres, you're going to have to repeat steps over and over and over again. And uh, an Ansible playbook to just run the same commands over again on each box is super nice. <laughs> um, so we'll let that run. Um, and that should essentially update. Let's get a get live here. Um, yep, so the pipeline finished, which means now I can add a job template. We'll call um, setup GitLab load balancer. We'll select your inventory. We'll select the playbook to install GitLab LB. We'll select the credential for root. And essentially, we will set the host name. I think it's the only variable in here. Um, and we will save that. Um, let's just double check. I didn't variableize anything else. Yep, just host name. And then what we can do here is essentially launch this, type in the host name to be GitLab internal, and we can hit next and launch. So this will essentially log in and set up GitLab or uh, HA proxy with on that machine with the configuration. All right, so now that it has essentially went through and configured it, we can actually log in real quick. GitLab um, internal dot dragon dot local, accept the key. Um, and we can just do, you know, a status HA proxy, um, <laughs> which you can see that uh, PG bounces down, perfect is down, but it's, it's running, which is expected because it's not actually running yet. Um, so we can exit out of that and then we can just confirm HA proxy, HA proxy.cfg that we ha do have it configured. So when they do come up, it will start load balancing essentially. So um, that is going to be it for the first part of this video. So we've essentially um, got everything pre set up to show you what the VMs and went through the configuration for the internal load balancer. Um, the next part that we'll be doing is configuring the console service um, in our video. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next part. Bye.